Now, at least eight people, including six law enforcement personnel, were killed and many others injured on Saturday in a suicide attack targeting a police picket in Pakistan's rest of Khyber Pakhtunwa province. The blast took place at Aslam Check Post in Mir Ali Tehsil of the North Waziristan Tribal District bordering Afghanistan. Riding three wheelers, the bombers hit the check post and vehicles of the security forces, killing four police personnel, two soldiers and two civilians. And Pakistan has announced that it has requested an additional 10 billion yuan, that's 1.4 billion US dollars loan from China, highlighting the ongoing external financing challenges Islamabad still faces. Finance Minister Mohammad Aurangzeb met with China's Vice Minister of Finance Liao Min and requested the Chinese side to raise the limits under the currency swap agreement to 40 billion CNY. This is according to a late night statement from the Ministry of Finance of Pakistan and it has already used the existing 30 billion CNY, that's 4.3 billion US dollars, Chinese trade facility to repay the debts and now seeks to raise this limit by an additional 10 billion CNY, translating to $1.4 billion at the current exchange rate. Now let's talk about uh, Pakistan's fate here, uh, which is uh, in a pincer grip of economic distress and terrorism and of course a general, uh, general uh, state of uh, uh, decline in society as well. Uh, we have TCA Raghavan with us, former Indian High Commissioner to Pakistan. Ambassador, what do you make of what's happening in Pakistan? Because it seems that uh, the situation could come to a head any time in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and in Balochistan. It could even slip out of Pakistan's grip at some point. Is, th is that a possibility with the way things are going? Well, it is true that for the past uh, four years or so, Pakistan has been in the grip of what we can loosely term as being a multi-sectoral crisis. This is a number of crisis vectors which have uh, intersected and created a situation to which, for which there are no easy answers. So there is an internal security crisis uh, and that is uh, uh, the symptoms of that are numerous terrorist attacks, uh, including of the kind your report uh, mentioned. There is a very serious economic crisis uh, and one symptom of that is the external financing gap uh, which exists. But there's also a deep political uh, crisis in the form of uh, polarization because the principal political leader of Pakistan, Imran Khan, continues to be in jail. And there are other symptoms of that crisis, such as the emerging conflict between the judiciary and the other arms of the uh, government put together uh, this is a general, this is a situation in which a number of crisis vectors, as I said, have intersected uh, together. The, the internal security crisis in the form of the terrorist attacks in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and in Baluchistan uh, is, uh, has, uh, is possibly the most demoralizing for the public uh, amongst all of these. Uh, now, there is no easy answer, as I said, to any of these uh, crisis vectors and uh, frankly none of the political parties in Pakistan presently appear to have the bandwidth to address uh, these uh, issues quite apart from the civil military uh, problems and tensions uh, which exist. But to answer your question that whether the situation can slip out of uh, control or whether Pakistan could be heading for some kind of implosion point in my view, that is an unlikely scenario. Uh, the fact is, Pakistan has been facing such crisis vectors for a very long period of time. And despite the, the, the very serious impact they have, uh, at no stage has it appeared that the situation is something which Pakistan's military authorities or its state cannot uh, control. Right. Now, um for that, you need resources and do you think as long as it keeps finding sustenance and I'm not just talking about the IMF, uh, there's of course the China factor, there are these uh, Gulf countries as well, uh, which uh, Pakistan seems to uh, be able to reach out to every now and then when it needs sustenance and uh, you know some kind of bailing out. Do you think uh, 
they would continue to do that as well and not think that at some point Pakistan is more of a liability than an asset. Well, there is a general sense of growing exasperation with uh, the continuous uh, demands which emerge from Pakistan to bail it out. There's no doubt about that. But the fact is, and this is something most countries realize, that Pakistan is the fourth or fifth largest country in the world. It has a huge population. It has nuclear uh, weapons. It's situated in a very sensitive geopolitical uh, location. It is in nobody's interest for a country such as Pakistan to break up or to implode or for things to, to spin out of control. If we look at it purely from an Indian perspective, we would not certainly like to see a Sudan-type situation where there is a full-scale civil war taking place to happen uh, in Pakistan. Uh, so the fact is, most of Pakistan's neighbors... But isn't, isn't, isn't a civil war already unfolding in a sense? Uh, the TTP itself is uh, 60 million strong, I believe. Well, some of these reports are exaggerated. Okay. And uh, while this internal security crisis is quite serious, uh, I think to term it as a civil war would be perhaps uh, an amplification or an exaggeration of the uh, situation. Uh, Pakistan faces, as I said, a number of very, very serious crisis vectors. But that the country will implode on account of that, uh, I think, is a very unlikely mm -hmm. And uh, do you see a way out of it uh, in, in some way, in uh, some amount of time? I mean, where does one start to put the first stitch in place? Well, I think Pakistan has to go back to uh, the drawing board and rethink some of its fundamental, uh, fundamental uh, positions. Uh, one critical factor is that they must recognize that they can't uh, uh, they can't continue to uh, give support to radical terrorist group, groups and expect that they will remain insulated from the impact of these groups. What they are facing today in terms of the TTP blowback or the action by other extremists and terrorist groups is largely a consequence of their own policies with regard to encouraging these groups and using them to attain objectives of their foreign policy uh, through them. Uh, so the TTP situation in which they find themselves uh, presently is because of their adventurous policies in Afghanistan for a very long period of time. Other terrorist groups which they have nurtured for use against India similarly have had a, there's been a blowback from them also in the past from time to time. So for a start, I think Pakistan has to rethink this policy of using terrorist groups for its, uh, uh, for attaining foreign policy uh, objectives. Yes, if it does that, it will be a good beginning. Thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador Raghavan.